This week on the forum, I'm interviewing the author Caroline Alexander. She's done a translation of Homer's Iliad and a commentary on the Iliad and many other great books. But I'm thinking especially about her book on the, the Endurance. That was the ship that Ernest Shackleton used to discover um, new regions in, in the Antarctic. He and his crew set off in 1914, um, just after the beginning of World War I, and they um, began in the, the very early days of the journey. They had um, dog kennels along both sides of the, the decks of the ship, um, and it seemed like such a joyous and a happy occasion. That the, the, the men enjoyed the travel, they had the things they needed on board, and they began to look um, through ways through the pack ice, through the sea ice. And as they slowly advanced, um, they woke up one morning and found themselves encased in ice. At first they thought that it wouldn't last for very many days, that they would soon be liberated and they'd be able to find a channel out of there, but it began to be weeks and weeks that they were stuck in the ice. And they were there for a very long time until finally the ice began crushing the hull of the ship. So their very shelter was being destroyed right before their eyes. And they realized that they needed to, to, to get away. And so they took the lifeboats from the ship, um, walked across the, the, the ice until they came to the ocean again, um, got on board the ships, and then went to Elephant Island, a, a totally remote island in the Antarctic seas. And from there, they realized, they set up kind of base camp, they realized that no one would ever find them unless they sent another crew out to go let the world know where they were. And so Ernest Shackleton took a few men on another ship, and during that voyage, um, he, had, he, he saw a 30-foot wave bearing down on the ship. Um, he said, men, grab hold of anything you can. And he kept having recurring nightmares, this terrible, terrible seas. But they did make it in safety to the next island. But from there, Ernest Shackleton went with um, two men, and they had to walk um, through the through very dangerous territory, filled with very steep cliffs and, and glaciers. And, uh, and as they were traveling, Ernest Shackleton had the sense that it wasn't just the three men that were, were walking along, that there was another presence along with them. And later he asked the others about it, and they had felt that too. Uh, and, and finally, they made it to the, the, to the port where the whalers were. They were able to gather a, a new crew that could go and rescue the men. And when he went up to the men, it was, they were on the, in the distance, and he could see through his binoculars, he counted 22 men. Everyone was saved. And the men were so delighted to see um, Ernest Shackleton, their captain, and that, that they had not perished in the ocean. It was a very difficult thing for those men to get back into society again. It was very difficult because they'd been gone for two years. The war in, the, in, in Europe had advanced. It had been a horrendous thing and everybody had forgotten about them. But they had to figure out how to start their lives again in this new, in this new world. Many of us also, after three years of being in COVID, are starting anew. Can't go back to the way things were before and we don't know for sure what things will be like in the future. But just in the same way that Ernest Shackleton, when he was in the most desperate moments of his entire life, walking for hours, 20 hours, through the, the cliffs and the mountains to find help, just in the same way that he felt a presence walking along with him, we too have a presence walking with us also. God is guiding us and directing us and giving us the strength that we need in order to survive and to thrive. My name is Malcolm Clemens Young. I'm the Dean of Grace Cathedral in San Francisco, California. Thanks for watching, more good news.